In the heart of the Brazilian rainforest is a remote creek. The Indians believed that an ancient spirit lived in the waters to protect them and the creatures who shared their world. Many explorers who ventured into this dark, unknown forest never came back. Survival Special reveals the true mysteries of life in this unique habitat. Creatures of the Magic Water, Sunday at 6.30 on Anglia. Living in fear. Something terrible's happened. Wycliffe, Sunday at 8 on Anglia. This is Anglia Television. From the studios of ITN, the news and sport with Carol Barnes and Steve Scott. Welcome to the programme, the headlines tonight. Britannia rules the waves again, a reprieve for the royal yacht. The missing music teacher on paedophile charges, a body is found. And in sport, tears as Kelly Holmes, Britain's best medal hope, pulls out of the World Championships. The Royal Yacht Britannia is to be saved under revised government plans. Instead of being scrapped, the yacht will have a £50 million refit to keep her at sea for another 20 years. Businesses will be able to rent Britannia, but the royal family will still have first call. John Draper reports. The last time Britannia was used on official business was during the handover of Hong Kong to China, and it had been thought that would be the vessel's own last great occasion of state. But having served the royal family for more than 40 years, Prince Charles here at the Hong Kong ceremonies, it now looks like getting a new lease of life. Because Britannia hasn't had the intensive use of a battleship, a refit could easily give her another 20 years. The Conservatives had wanted to replace her at a cost of £70 million. Mr Blair firmly ruled that out. He wants a consortium of financiers to pay the £50 million for the refit under the private finance initiative. The ship would then be rented out for business conferences for some of the time to raise the money to service the charges, but the Queen would have first call on her for official functions. The idea of refitting Britannia instead of scrapping her and paying for it through the private finance initiative was considered but rejected by the Treasury when the Conservatives were in power. Now the Labour governments revived the idea as the option giving the best value for money for the taxpayer. John Draper, ITN at the Treasury. Police searching for the public school teacher charged with child pornography offences have found a man's body in the sea of Eastbourne. Adrian Stark hasn't been seen since he was bailed on Wednesday. His car was found parked at Beachy Head this afternoon. From there, Nigel Burwood reports. Beachy Head in Sussex, a notorious spot for suicides, now feared to be the last refuge of a teacher facing child pornography charges. Music teacher Adrian Stark had been missing for three days when late this afternoon police found his car parked only yards from the 200 foot high cliffs. And three miles out to sea, the Eastbourne lifeboat crew recovered a man's body. Mr Stark disappeared from St John's School at Leatherhead in Surrey after police charged him with pornography offences. Officers who searched his flat at the school found hundreds of videos and still photographs all allegedly obscene and depicting young children. This evening, as holidaymakers strolled along the cliff top at Beachy Head, unaware of the suspected tragedy, St John's School issued a statement in which they said, if this body does prove to be Mr Stark, then the school will be desperately sorry to hear the news. Tonight in Eastbourne, police investigating the disappearance of the teacher are still trying to identify the body found in the sea. Nigel Burwood, ITN, East Sussex. Rescue workers in Australia again picking through the rubble of the ski resort landslide, looking for more survivors. Hopes are high after the discovery of ski instructor Stuart Diver. He was pulled out alive after two and a half days buried under concrete. Tim Rogers reports. Out of the chaos and debris, a sign of hope. The first survivor lifted to safety two and a half days after being trapped. It took 12 hours to free him from a tomb of concrete after they heard his muffled cries for help. Uh, we called for complete silence on the site. A gentleman identified himself, said he was in uh, fine spirits and doing quite well, and uninjured, just extremely cold. The survivor, 30-year-old ski instructor Stuart Diver. Yeah! He was airlifted to hospital where he's in a stable condition, suffering mainly from the effects of hypothermia. 
His parents are at his bedside where they're praying for his full recovery and for those still to be found. The new day brought new hope and uh, so we hope that it might happen again. But with the relief, there's pain. Three more bodies have been found and conditions for rescuers are treacherous. But the search goes on, now buoyed by the hope that where one survived, there may be more. Tim Rogers, ITN. The present and former Prime Ministers both handed out honours today. Among a raft of new working Labour peers, Mr Blair appointed the thriller writer Ruth Rendell, the QC Helena Kennedy and the film producer Sir David Putnam. Among Mr Major's choices were former colleagues. Michael Heseltine was appointed a Companion of Honour and there were knighthoods for Brian Marwinney and Malcolm Rifkind. In the last half hour, the Foreign Secretary, Robin Cook, has made a statement about the breakup of his marriage. Mr Cook is leaving his wife, Margaret, after 28 years for his House of Commons Secretary. This is a statement which none of us would wish to make. I can confirm that I am leaving my wife. I want to make it clear that the responsibility for this is entirely mine. Margaret and I now hope to restructure our own lives. Thousands of anti-hunt demonstrators marched in London today, calling on the government to ban blood sports. But some animal rights groups urged their supporters not to join the protest because they said it was unnecessary and confrontational. Neil Connery reports. More than three and a half thousand people came to march despite calls from some animal welfare groups to stay away. As the stag hunting season begins this weekend, the protesters wanted to keep up the pressure. But missing from the march were members of the League Against Cruel Sports meeting in Somerset. The League and the RSPCA did not support the London March, a move which angered the organisers. If only we had all been able to join together in one mass rally, my God, London would never ever have seen such a spectacle in all its years. But the passions here were just as strong. We are here for all those animals which are hunted and abused and terrified. This may not have been as large as last month's pro-hunt demonstration, but the organisers hope it will send a clear message to the government to ban blood sports. Neil Connery, ITN, Central London. Now today's sports news, and with the details, here's Steve Scott. Britain's hopes of gold at the World Athletics Championships in Athens were dealt a blow before breakfast this morning. Kelly Holmes, tipped for the title in the women's 1500 metres, limped off in tears in the qualifying round. Graham Miller reports from Athens. She said she must be cursed at the major events. For Kelly Holmes, Britain's best gold medal hope, Athens has turned